Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update as to what's happening in Argentina. Now, if you've been following the channel, you'll know that Argentina has a new president. And normally when we're talking about new presidents, we're talking about some old, boring guy who takes over from the previous old, boring guy. But not the new president in Argentina. Javier Mille is a rock and roll president. <laughs> Apologies if that sequence made you spill your coffee, but I wanted to liven things up a bit because things are starting to get really exciting on the political front in Argentina. Now, Javier Mille took control of the country on the 10th of December, and in his inauguration speech, he said that it was likely that things were going to get worse before they got better. And he was absolutely right, because the latest data that we're seeing shows that Argentina now has the highest rate of inflation out of any country in the world, 254%. That isn't something that he was hoping to achieve. And in addition to that, it's recently been announced that the level of poverty in Argentina has now hit 57%, compared with around 49% at the end of December. So things are definitely starting to get worse. But the big question is, can Javier Mille actually turn things around? Obviously, what's happening right now isn't because of what he's doing. He's only just taking control of the country. It's like getting into a speeding car when it's running away at 200 miles an hour and trying to make it turn and slow down rapidly. It's going to be very difficult for him to be able to turn things around. So in today's video, we'll have a look at exactly what's going on with regards to the level of inflation. We'll look at food inflation and interest rates. We'll then talk about what's happening with the currency, the peso, because one of the first things that Javier Mille did introduce was a 54% devaluation of the peso. However, that doesn't look like it was enough. The peso is still crashing. It's falling in value. So I'll have a look at exactly what's going on with it and what the high level of dollarization in Argentina right now means for the economy. We'll then look at his reform bill, which was his major policy that he brought in. He wanted to make 600 changes to the laws and the taxes and the regime in Argentina to try to turn things around. But he's got to get that approved. It's got to go through the official channels and he's having some difficulty with that. So I'll give you an update on exactly what's happening with that reform bill and what's going on with regards to the IMF, because Argentina is the world's largest borrower from the IMF. Are they supportive? Are they on board with what he wants to do? And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months and whether or not Javier Mille has a chance of steering Argentina back into the slow lane. But before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. If you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks over the last seven days, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you've signed up as a patron or a member, you're providing long-term support for the channel, and that really does help to keep me posting more videos. So thank you so much. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of inflation in Argentina over the last 12 months. And as you can see, this time last year, inflation had already moved into triple digit territory when it hit 102% in February 2023. However, since then, it has risen in virtually every single month. And in the last three months, it's really started to accelerate, hitting 161% in November, 211% in December, and an astronomical 254% in January 2024. And as I mentioned at the start of today's video, that now ranks Argentina as the country with the highest rate of inflation in the whole of the world. And in fact, as you can see from this table, it's now the only country in the world with inflation above 200%. And there are only three other countries with inflation in triple digits, 
which are Lebanon, where the inflation is currently 177%. And Lebanon is a war-torn country. It had a civil war back around 20 years ago, and it's never really recovered from that situation. Syria, where inflation is 150%, and Syria is also a war-torn economy. And Venezuela, where the inflation rate is now 107%, and Venezuela is suffering from the severe sanctions that have been applied against the country since the disputed re-election of the current president, Nicolas Maduro. And when you look at some of the other names on this list, where there are serious economic problems, such as Turkey, Iran, Zimbabwe, Cuba, Egypt and Pakistan, you can see that the rate of inflation in those countries is significantly lower and really puts into perspective just how serious the situation is in Argentina right now. And just in case you were thinking that Argentina has always had inflation problems, this chart shows the official rate of inflation over the last 25 years. And as you can see, the current levels are completely off the scale compared to what Argentina has historically had to deal with in terms of inflation. It has had a relatively high rate of inflation compared to other countries in the world. It's been in double digit territory for around the last 10 years. However, it hasn't been anywhere near the triple digit territory that it's now in and certainly not the 250 plus range. This chart shows the movement in food prices in Argentina over the last 12 months. And if you follow the channel, you'll know that we always like to look at food inflation because it gives a really good indication as to what's going on with regards to the standard of living in the country. Every human being has to buy food to survive, but the poorest members of society spend a much higher percentage of their budget on food. And so when food prices are rising rapidly, it disproportionately affects that part of society and makes life more miserable and much harder and basically increases the cost of living. And what this chart shows is a similar trend to what we've just seen for the actual inflation. However, the rate of increase over the past few months has been much higher. This time last year, food prices were increasing at 102%, which is exactly the same as general inflation. And over the last 12 months, we have seen those prices increase. But over the last three months, there has been an acceleration. And in November, food prices increased by 184%. They increased by 251% in December. And in January 24, food prices rose by a record 296%. So that means that compared with this time last year, food is almost four times as expensive. Because if you think about it, a 100% increase would be a doubling in the price. A 200% increase would be a trebling in the price. So a 300% increase is a quadrupling in the price. So if you're paying a dollar for something this time last year, you'd now be paying $4 for that same item. And once again, this shows just how serious the existing situation is because if you can't afford to keep putting food on your table, then that means that your family are going to starve and people are genuinely living very hard lives in Argentina right now. So we're not just looking at inflation being an interesting statistic to mull over, we're actually talking about the fact that Argentinians are struggling to be able to afford to keep living right now. And as I mentioned at the start of today's video, in a recent study, it was declared that over 57% of the Argentinian population are currently living in poverty, where they simply don't have enough money to be able to get by each month. And a recent report by Reuters stated that more and more people in Argentina are having to rely on soup kitchens, and those soup kitchens are actually struggling to be able to afford to keep providing food for all of the people who need it. And in terms of comparing the rate of food inflation in Argentina with the rest of the world, not surprisingly, at 296%, it's the highest in the world. And in fact, it's the highest by a long margin. The next highest rate is in Lebanon, where it's 181%. And that's the only other country that has triple digit food inflation. The third country on the list is Venezuela, where it's 90% followed by Turkey at 69% and Zimbabwe at 60%. So that really puts into perspective just how severe the price rises for food at the moment are in Argentina and why this is causing such major concern. This chart shows the movement in the official rate of interest in Argentina over the last 12 months. 
And the reason that I wanted to show you this is that whenever we're talking about inflation, we always talk about interest rates because the traditional way to deal with high levels of inflation is to increase your interest rates because it increases the cost of borrowing and therefore discourages companies and individuals from taking on more debt. It also increases some of the existing debt costs and therefore should reduce the amount of free cash and therefore reduce the amount of spending and ultimately lead to a fall in prices and bring inflation back down. That's what happens in a normal economic situation. However, what's going on in Argentina right now is not classified as a normal economic situation. If we have a look at what's been going on with interest rates, this time last year, the rates of interest were already at astronomically high levels. They were running at around 75%. And over the last 12 months, there have been numerous rate rise increases and the rate peaked at 126% in October. Now, interestingly, one of the first things that happened after Javier Mille took control of the country was that interest rates were reduced from 126% to 100%, which ranks Argentina as the country with the second highest interest rate in the world. The country with the highest is Zimbabwe, where it's 130%. And the economy of Zimbabwe collapsed many years ago. The next highest after Argentina is Venezuela, where it's just under 58%, followed by Turkey at 45% and Ghana at 29%. And you may be sitting there thinking, why has Argentina reduced its interest rate at a time when inflation is the highest in the world? Surely they should be increasing interest rates to bring inflation back under control. And if everything was happening as normal in Argentina, that would be absolutely the right logic. However, the connection between interest rates and inflation in Argentina is entirely broken. And the reason for that is a lot of people in Argentina have abandoned the Argentine peso and are now using the US dollar. So when you move interest rates, it has a much lower impact than it would in other countries because people aren't using the peso. They're not borrowing in pesos. And so increasing the interest rate and increasing the cost of borrowing in pesos doesn't impact on the vast majority of the population. So let's have a look at exactly what's going on with the peso. This chart shows the movement in the official exchange rate between the US dollar and the Argentine peso over the last five years. And as you can see, this time five years ago, one US dollar was trading officially for 35 pesos. Today, it's trading for 841. And if we zoom in and have a look at what's happened over the last 12 months, this time last year, one US dollar was trading for 197 pesos. And that means that in the last 12 months, the peso has seen a devaluation of over 76%. And that is officially a crash in anybody's language. Now, you may be looking at this chart and thinking that it looks very unusual. It's got a very strange shape to it. There isn't a continual and gradual decline in the peso. We've got some sharp movements here. And the reason for that is that what we're looking at here is the official exchange rate in Argentina. And this is controlled by the Argentinian Central Bank. And effectively what they're doing is fixing it at certain levels that they think it should be trading at. This isn't a true market float. And the reason that there's a vertical line on this chart in December 2023 is that that represents the 54% devaluation that Javier Mille introduced as soon as he took over as president to try to move the peso official exchange rate closer to the real exchange rate on the streets, which is referred to as the blue dollar rate. This chart shows the movement in the blue dollar rate over the last 12 months. And as you can see, the movement of this chart is more in line with what you would expect to see with an exchange rate movement. There's more of a fluid continuation in the downward trend in the value of the peso. Now, interestingly, this time last year, one US dollar was trading for 377 pesos on the blue dollar exchange rate compared with 197 for the official rate. So that means that the blue dollar rate was 48% lower than the official rate. Today, the blue dollar exchange rate is $1 to 1,070 pesos compared to the official rate of $1 to 841 pesos. So the divergence today between the blue dollar rate and the official rate is around 20%. So it has reduced significantly since Javier Mille took over, but there is still a significant difference. 
And until the two rates come together, we will always see a black market forming in pesos. And that's one of the problems that's happening in Argentina right now. Everybody has lost confidence in the peso. And therefore, the vast majority of people prefer to be paid and to pay in US dollars because they believe that the dollar has intrinsic value and isn't deteriorating as rapidly as the peso. When you've got inflation running at over 250%, that means that the value of the pesos in your pocket is falling on a daily basis. You want to spend them as fast as possible because this time next week, they'll be worth less. You'll be able to buy less food than you can today. Whereas if you're holding US dollars, that isn't the situation. And so therefore, everybody wants to be paid in dollars. They want to hold their savings in dollars and they want to make payments in dollars. And that's the reason why continually increasing interest rates in Argentina right now isn't having any impact on the rate of inflation because everybody's ignoring what's happening with interest rates and they're all using US dollars rather than the peso. So as we've seen from the data in today's video, things are really tough in Argentina right now and they are actually getting worse. Now, all of this isn't Javier Mille's fault. He's just taking control at a point when things are spiraling. And what he wants to do is try to turn things around. And in order to do that, he presented what he called an omnibus bill with over 600 changes to the laws in Argentina to try to make things better. But he can't approve things on his own. He isn't an actual dictator. He needs to get all of the other lawmakers in Argentina to approve his reforms. Now, this reform bill has proved to be very controversial and there's been a lot of demonstrations against it because he wants to privatise some of the nationally owned businesses that relate to resources in Argentina. And there are people who are concerned that the state is giving away its assets too cheaply. And as a result of this, there's been a lot of debate in the Argentinian government. And the reform bill has been reduced from 600 changes to around 300 law changes. However, every single one of those individual laws needs to be approved independently. And so it is going to take a long period of time for this bill to actually be signed off. And what it actually looks like at the end of the process remains to be seen because everything is being changed and amended to get everybody to approve it. So Javier Mille's finding that the reality of politics isn't quite as easy as coming in and saying you're going to change everything overnight, waving a magic wand and everything suddenly being as you want it. You have to go through the official channels, the official processes, and that takes a long period of time. And there's usually a high level of compromise needed. And so the laws themselves may not be as effective and as dramatic as he wanted them to be. And it's likely to take longer than he originally expected. Javier Mille isn't finding that everybody is supportive of his tactics because Argentina is split into various regions and some of those regions have natural resources and see themselves as being powerful within the Argentine nation. And a political conflict has now broken out with the region of Chubut in the south of Argentina. Chubut is Argentina's second largest oil region and third largest for gas. However, Javier Mille recently held back a payment that was due from the central government to the region in response to the fact that the region has a large amount of debt owing to the state that it wasn't making payments on. In response to this, Chibut Governor Ignacio Torres said that the province would cut energy supplies to the nation if funds were not dispersed. And in response to this, Javier Mille called this extortion by the region. So clearly not everybody is fully supportive of Javier Mille's revolution. And it will be fascinating to see just how long it takes for all of the reform bill to go through its process of approval and what comes out the other end and what Javier Mille can actually do with the economics of Argentina. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, Argentina is the country in the world that has the most debt outstanding to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. This chart shows the position as of the 27th of February 2024. And as you can see, Argentina's debt is standing at $32.45 billion. The country with the second highest outstanding amount of debt is Egypt at just under $11 billion, followed by Ukraine at just under $9 billion, Pakistan at just under $6 billion, 
and Ecuador at just under 5.9 billion. And in addition to the 32.5 billion of debt that's already in place, in January the IMF announced that it was releasing a further 4.7 billion dollars to Argentina, and in itself that 4.7 billion would have made Argentina one of the biggest borrowers from the IMF. But obviously, when you add it onto the 32.5 billion, it's streets ahead of everybody else. So it's been receiving a serious amount of support from the IMF. But what's the IMF's view of Javier Mille's position? Well, they are very supportive. They believe that he's on the right track. Obviously, whatever's been happening over the last few years hasn't been working and the IMF has continued giving money to Argentina to try to help it. So they believe that Javier Mille and his radical policies are the way forward. And it'll be interesting to see, firstly, how many of those radical policies actually make it through the voting process. And secondly, what happens when they're actually introduced, whether or not it does start to improve the situation in Argentina or if it makes things worse. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because what's going on in Argentina is really fascinating. A hundred years ago, Argentina was one of the biggest economies in the world. They were a major player. However, today, the country is in dire straits. It's a sad situation. It should be doing much better than it is. However, through mismanagement and poor economics over the last 50 years, the country has found itself in one of the worst positions out of every country in the world. It's taken on far too much debt historically. It's struggled to be able to maintain and pay that debt, and it's become a vicious circle. And Javier Mille has come in on a white charger. He said that he's going to sort things out. There's going to be an economic revolution. But he did say that it was going to get worse before it got better, and he was absolutely right, because right now it's the worst that it's been at any point in the past 25 to 50 years. Inflation is now the highest out of every country in the world. And when you've got inflation running at 250%, which means that it's increasing by more than 20% per month. And if you just take a second to think about that, we've been talking about rates of inflation of 8, 9, 10% per year being a disaster for a lot of the developed world. When you're talking about 20% per month, things are going up more than 20%. It means that everybody is struggling to be able to afford basic things such as food. And as we saw, Argentina has the highest levels of food inflation out of any country in the world. And that means that more and more people are being pushed into poverty. And that's why there are demonstrations on the streets of Argentina right now. It isn't because they don't like Javier Mille. They're blaming him for their current situation. They don't like any of the politicians because they haven't been running Argentina well for a very long period of time. So Javier Mille has a major task on his hands. In order to turn this around, he needs a miracle. He needs things to start going back to where they were 100 years ago. And one of the major problems that he's facing is that he doesn't really have control of the monetary supply because nobody in Argentina wants to use the Argentine peso because of the fact that inflation is so high and it's devaluing on a daily basis. You're able to buy less and less things every time you go to the shops with your pesos. People don't want to run that risk. They don't want to go to the supermarket and find that they don't have enough money to pay for all of the food that they need for their family. They would be much happier going in with US dollars knowing exactly how much they can buy. So that's what's happening in Argentina today. And to be able to control the inflation becomes very difficult because when you lose the link between interest rates and inflation, you lose the inherent control that that provides you with. So Javier Mille needs to find other ways of being able to fix the problems. And as you saw during his election campaign, he was actually threatening to cancel the peso, to actually move Argentina to using the US dollar 100%, like we've seen in countries like El Salvador and Ecuador. However, that hasn't happened. It was too radical a step for all of the lawmakers, so he hasn't done that. But I think it's a distinct possibility that he is still considering it, because in order to get control of the economy, he needs to do some radical things. But as we've talked about in today's video, one of the problems that he faces is that he needs approval 
from the rest of the government. And the government is split in terms of the parties and their support for Javier Mille. He was voted in with around 54% of the votes, which tells you that around 46% of the country were not supporting him. And that's broadly what we've got in the government. We've got a split between all of the different lawmakers. And that makes it very difficult to get things approved because everybody has to agree on a consensus position. And so I think what's likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months is that the radical reforms that Javier Mille wanted to bring in are going to be very difficult to deliver because he needs those approvals. That's going to slow him down in terms of making those changes. And therefore, the turnaround in Argentina is likely to take longer than he originally expected if it ever happens at all. So I think the outlook for the next three months is that we will continue to see a deterioration in the situation. By the first half of 2024, it's likely that inflation could actually rise closer to 300%. It may even go above 300%. So Argentina is likely to remain as the country with the highest rate of inflation in the world. Whether or not it can turn around in the second half of 2024 really depends on whether or not those reforms can be approved. And if they are, whether they actually have any teeth and they start to work. And that is the big question. And so the overall summary of today's video is that Javier Mille has now taken control of this speeding car, which is completely out of control. Whether or not he can apply the brakes and do a U-turn and bring Argentina back from the brink really remains to be seen. But it's going to be a fascinating journey and I'll keep you posted on any further developments. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You've found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.